be introducing Jack and Jack Ryan Feldman and uh, Ben Hart for this uh, session. Uh, we're going to be talking about account accounting and financial management services. So let me give a brief introduction here. Uh, Jack serves as municipal advisor to local governments in Kansas and Missouri. He has a wide range of experience in local government, including operational budgeting, policy and programming analysis, eco-devo, tax incentives, and real uh, property assessment. And co uh, also uh, presenting is Ben Hart. He has more than 25 years of experience working with cities, counties, utilities. In addition to his experience as a municipal advisor, he previously served as the director of resource management for two larger municipalities in the KC metro area. He has 15 years combined, uh, combined experience uh, with both uh, communities, including managing each entity's annual appropriation uh, and utility based debt, as well as leading the finance team's complex economic development initiatives. Now, I first heard uh, Ben present probably seven or eight years ago in Wichita. He was talking about the budgeting process, did an excellent job. I could tell he knew what he was talking about. And I've been working um, as part of the KSUFA budget class. Uh, Jack and Ben have been volunteering their time to uh, help teach it. And so I can tell from that also that they're eminently qualified to uh, give advice. And we thank them for them, not only for their service to the, to the KSGFOA, but also uh, supporting the conference, sponsoring the conference. And so we would uh, just ask that you uh, consider going out to the website, check out their company and their profile on the resource board information. And again, thank you, uh, Jack and Ben and Baker Tilly for sponsoring the conference and just generally supporting I'll hand it over to Ben or Jack. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Um, I hear some noise. Um, uh, thanks for that great introduction. Um, also, uh, in that spirit, um, we actually do have a couple other Baker Tilly folks that I can see on the participation on the participant list. Um, we have Tom Calico, who is the partner in our office, uh, in, as well uh, on the municipal advisory side. Um, and then we also have Dan Hedden, um, who is a partner in our Indianapolis office um, and also leads a lot of these uh, financial management and accounting services uh, engagements uh, uh, for us. And um, we'll um, uh, get them in, engaged in, in this presentation at some point as well. Um, so just a little bit. A uh, short commercial about Baker Tilly, um, since uh, at least the name Baker Tilly is still somewhat new to Kansas, though, you know, Tom, Ben and I are uh, relatively uh, known quantities um, for, as Springstead. Um, Baker Tilly is a national, international uh, firm. Uh, we've got 3,800 team members uh, across a, a number of industries. Um, we've got uh, around a hundred, around a thousand public sector clients. Um, in our public sector practice, we've got 420 dedicated uh, public service or public sector uh, professionals. Um, and and as as mentioned, um, Baker Tilly Municipal Advisors is. A, uh, a combination of three firms, um, which was Springstead, Umba, and Baker Tilly, um, to to create a a a, uh, a a top ten independent municipal advisory firm, um, and uh, and and so we um, have a lot of experience. And you know, for the for those of you that know um, that new Springstead and and all of the services that we provided, um, you know. Baker Tilly is a lot broader and deeper than, um, than what you knew as, as Spring said. Um, so the topic of the, of the presentation is, you know, financial management and, and accounting services. Um, and in the session, in, you know, the session description was in the, was in with the backdrop of COVID and, uh, you know, a lot of these trends pressuring local government, um, 
you know, we've got rapid technological change. You have, uh, um, you know, trouble recruiting experienced finance uh, positions. We've we've noticed in in the in um, Kansas and, and Missouri, um, it, and then you know, throw a pandemic in there where you also have to have some you know resiliency within your organization in order to still be able to deliver the the services that you all provide. Um, and and one one small way that you can potentially get um, you know added resiliency or added capacity within your um, within your finance department um, is to parcel some functions out and, and outsource outsource that to a to a third party. Um, so the on the slide before you is a couple of triggers that that we that we see commonly when when cities um, reach out to us and, and say hey we're we're seeing a need here for uh, potentially um, for potentially outsourcing some of our of our finance functions um, the number number one thing that we've seen is a is a turnover of key positions um, if you if you have a finance director that that's been there or an accountant that's been there for 10 or 15 years. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to find a comparably experienced, you know, professional to, to get in there. Um, you know, sometimes that that's going to add, you know, there's some downstream effects to that. Um, you know, as with respect to the staffing and capacity issues, um, it, you know, we, the, you know, government budgets are, are tight. It's, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, important decisions to be made and, and not always um, do, when you're making budget decisions, do um, a lot of times, you know, administrative tasks um, and, you know, kind of that middle management, um, sometimes that gets short shrift. Um, and so that, so that, that way, um, you know, we can alleviate that. Um, internal control issues for for some of you that are that are very small, you know, one or one or two person shops, you know, you could potentially get some internal control issues, um, and in adding another person in there can could potentially add some uh, internal control there. Um, sometimes all of the above manifests itself as late filing of record of required annual reports and audits. Um, that's, you know, maybe more of a symptom of, you know, what, what the above um, issues that we just discussed. Um, the potential reallocation of resources, if you've got an opportunity to, to reorganize and, and redeploy some, um, some uh, manpower elsewhere, um, that, you know, that's um, one, way that, one way that we can help. Um, also, you know, access to specific expertise, otherwise unaffordable. Um, you know, I, maybe just in the narrow sense, see, I, I'm thinking of, you know, arbitrage where, you know, that's, that's a very specific expertise that's required and it's, you know, expertise that you, that you only need every once in a while. Um, and so there's, you know, there isn't necessarily a, a need to have someone on staff, you know, to, um, you know, to, to be up on all of the arbitrage issues all the time. Um, and then lastly, you know, scalable scope of, uh, uh, scalable issues and scalable scopes of work. Um, for some cities that are, you know, growing, you know, increased need. Um, if you know that you're going to have, for example, a bunch of um, TIF districts coming down the pike, and you've got a lot of future accounting work that you know that you have uh, coming ahead of you, um, but you know that you're not going to get, you know, additional staff to help you manage all of those additional, you know, TIF accounting and all those issues. Um, you know, outsourcing with a third party could potentially help with that. You know, we've, you know, we've got, you know, additional capacity and in, in those economies of scale. Um, you know, I've, I've done plenty of talking. Um, ben, do you have any, uh, any color commentary that, that you can add here? Yeah, the only thing I'd add on the uh, access to specific exper uh, expertise, I know early on in my career, uh, I know Springstead was around uh, well, since time began, but since I began in, in government, one of the things I wanted to do is get the most out of my contractors as I could. So if they've seen something with a client that they could share with me to make my operation better, that is access to specific expertise I wouldn't otherwise have. So they'd be able to bring that in. Uh, and many of you do the same thing because I hear uh, from certain clients, well, can you guys give me an idea about 
A, B, and C. Uh, obviously, everybody comes with an opinion. Uh, not everybody has the, comes with an expertise or having done something or know somebody that have done something that otherwise, you know, that otherwise would help that entity. Uh, but that's a pretty good summary of, of those key triggers that Jack just went through. You want to go to the next slide? Sure. Uh, so what what we've got here is is more of a laundry list of those items. And I, the title of this slide is what we can do for you. And while that's true, these are these are uh, more than not many of the items I know across my 25 years that I've either outsourced, had somebody come in and help with, or got training in from another contractor. Uh, and, and since Dan's on, we're gonna promise the world for, that he can deliver. <laughs> uh, but what we do, would like to do is just kind of go through each one of these and what these might look like. Uh, what we see, say on the full accounting department functions, really the top four, you can kind of lump together. Uh, we see a lot of the smaller entities that will take a accounting department function and scale it. I know in the past I've had uh, I've actually dealt with AR and AP uh, outsourced uh, in the fact that if everything's electronic when you get batches and you've got to have somebody in an entity that has is the gatherer of information, if you will. On the bookkeeping side, it's similar to that. Internal control was a big one. Obviously, you know, the three, uh, the three top uh, uh, principles, detective, preventive and, and corrective categories. Uh, any one of those three can be, let's say, outsourced, and somebody like uh, Baker Tilly or a firm can actually step in and, and perform or, or, or uh, fulfill one of those uh, one of those criteria. I'm just thinking bank reconciliations at this point uh, is a big one. Control the cash, cash is king. So if you can control the cash, that's something you get an outs outside person to do because one, you don't have the time to do it, or two, you don't have the expertise to do it. Uh, that's a function that somebody else can do. Uh, incentive revenue and expense accounting is another one. Uh, things that come in, just having a separate third party actually taking a look at uh, of that revenue and the expenses going out, making sure it's recorded correctly. Uh, general ledger maintenance <clears throat> is a unique one. It comes from all walks of life. You can either dial in through a VPN to make sure you know everything in the general ledger is actually setting itself up right. Uh, to where you can use somebody else's software. I know Baker Tilly has its own software that we can implement for smaller entities, uh, typically a utility, uh, that we can actually manage that, that general ledger, you know, cloud-based ser cloud services anymore. Uh, so that maintenance would be important. Optimization of preparation for audits. Uh, it, it, in this case, it could be augmenting staff that already has their hands full, but knows, you know, the work papers to generate uh, to the fact that you may have lost somebody that knows that process, uh, that you need to have somebody step in for a year, two years, and fulfill that uh, to, to get that audit uh, prepared. We've had a call from a client here recently that they unexpectedly had their finance director go on a part-time basis, permanent part-time basis, and their audit's still late. Imagine that in COVID days, audit's late. I don't know that I've seen one on time yet, uh, but this individual wasn't done with the audit. They weren't done preparing uh, for that audit. And the auditors got most of what they need done, but there's certain key aspects of it that needed to be finished. Uh, we called Dan in to, to help them get that audit uh, completed. He's not doing the audit. He's, uh, his staff is looking at the preparation, the documents that need to be prepared for that audit, amongst a host of other things. Uh, financial statement preparation. You know, this is this comes from full CAFR all the way down to the regulatory basis that Kansas has, you know, the cash basis accounting, uh, the fact that that whole process can be outsourced uh, uh, and that whole writing process can be outsourced. I know as a previous auditor, uh, it was hard pressed to get an auditor to actually write the financial statements. And it might be that way in the future, depending on what GASB and some of the audit standards have uh, are playing out. Uh, it, it may be an outsourced uh, uh, outsourced uh, function instead of having the auditors do it. In that same genre as the CIFA, the Schedule of Federal State Awards, uh, obviously, it, it, again, it gets, it's, a, it's a reporting issue uh, and gathering information out of your general ledger to put a lot of that information together. Uh, training and compliance. In this case, we could step in and actually augment staff Maybe it's new staff that doesn't have a whole lot of government experience that you're looking for somebody to ride shotgun to answer questions. 
uh, that they may have uh, going along in the process. I know we've got one client like that right now uh, to where they just need some expertise and somebody to call so they can they can move forward on, on what they need on a daily basis sometimes. Uh, process improvements, in this case, we've seen a couple of utilities, fairly large utilities that said uh, either brand new uh, directors come in or uh, brand new accounting staff that come in and they want to improve their process before that staff gets there. Do we have the right people in the right place? And then if we have the right people in the right place, do they have the right training to do their function? And that's that's a capability we, we have and we've done here uh, in the metro area before. Economic and development incentive administration, sometimes this is uh, something that's forgotten or just not on the top of the priority list uh, with some entities. Uh, and, and this is really aimed at any kind of revenues that's coming in that has to turn around and go right back out. Uh, more times than not, you've got a governing body that wants to know how much revenue an incentive uh, a district has raised. Uh, and maybe if we had a turnover in staff or if you just don't have somebody dedicated to be unable to pull that type of report together. Again, that's something that we can step in and help out with. And we have, we're doing it right now. And, uh, and, I'll, and I'll say, yeah. especially on the the TIF administration side, um, I think one of the one of the pieces where it's really a value add is, um, you know, if you contract with the third party, um, you know, they can build that institutional knowledge um, that you know, because we're talking about you know TIF projects that are going for twenty years, right? And yeah. um, you've got your it, who's to say that you know your TIF specialist or that accountant is going to stay on staff for that long um, and and a lot of times um you know one of our one of our you know trickiest projects that we're working on right now on the tiff accounting side is you know just disentangling you know 10 years of tiff history with a new finance director um and then documenting it and you know getting it charting it on a on a course that you know we'll, we'll be able to help them in the future yeah it, 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 and in that case the city administrator had a sit down with him and he says, look, we have no idea how our tips are, are functioning. Are they, are they actually drawing the revenue they're supposed to? I know there's deficits and this is his words. We, I know there's deficits across the board. We just don't know what the level of the deficits are. Uh, so that was, we were scrambling to get reports together. While they had somebody in there to be able to process the activity, they just didn't have somebody that could actually pull it all into a report and actually give them an assessment. Well, you've got over 15, 20 tips or, CIDs, uh, yeah, that can be overwhelming fast. In that case, it you know it pays to have somebody to come in and actually pull that report together. And then on the training piece, maybe it's training that individual on how to pull that report together. You set a template, template up, and they could go ahead and populate it uh, moving forward. Uh, you know, and that kind of leads to budget assistance. So it's really forecasting uh, what goes into those obviously those revenues and expenses on the economic development side, but really uh, a budget from soup to nuts. It just, it, it, you, you, can, you can have somebody come in and assist you with some of those pieces like revenue forecasting, uh, putting the CIP together. Maybe it's just helping organize a lot of that stuff. I know I helped three, four different individual uh, cities, smaller cities uh, do budgets from, from start to finish. So we start with the city administrator, and get everything kicked off. Then we actually reach out to the departments and had uh, and actually gather that information, put the information, put the uh, spreadsheets together to be able to bring back to the uh, council. In that case, we're the one that's we're the ones that's uh, in front of the council, in front of the governing bodies, organizing the workshops and going through the budgets. Uh, I know in the past I've helped an entity just put their forecast together and that's it. We've also just put capital plans together and that's it. Uh, and sometimes those budgets are contentious and it's easier to have somebody outside the party actually giving them an opinion on what needs to happen. Uh, from a payroll perspective, obviously there's an outsourced payroll, uh, done that in the past. I haven't, I, I've got people that do payroll. Payroll is obviously a very technical aspect of what an entity does. Uh, account reconciliations. In this case, I'm thinking, you know, capital assets, fixed assets. Uh, when you're keeping your, uh, general ledger, say on a cash basis, and you just don't have everything collected as far as capitalizing those assets. Everything runs through as an expense, but the auditors are the ones that actually keep the fixed asset ledger for you. 
uh, those account reconciliations can be important. And maybe there, again, there's a turnover in staff, whether it's your accounting tech, your accounting manager, whoever it might be, uh, that can come in and do some of those account reconciliations. One of the other things that we, we've done in the past is uh, utility billing and some of those AR uh, accounts receivable functions, reconciling those accounts. In one case, uh, we had an entity that was not charging, uh, charging the utilities, charging the customer uh, the right kind of utility uh, or what the approved on rate approved rates were. So we had to come in and not just reconcile the account, but define uh, what the overage or, or under was uh, on the revenue, what was expected, and then how to how to you know unfold that and get it get it refunded. Uh, internal audit functions again, it, it's a matter of risk assessment uh, coming in and having an external party uh, looking at your internal audit functions. Uh, not everybody I know on this call has an internal audit, nor do you maybe even know what the value of that internal audit would be. In this case, it may just be. Uh, something somebody one maybe it's a member of the public or, or or your governing body would like something looked at a process looked at and that's something that we can look at just doing a risk assessment uh, in this case it might be your uh, assessment of any kind of risk associated with cybersecurity or or uh, uh, you know a ransomware whatever it might look like um, financial forecasting is a big one uh, because there's multiple funds that can be forecasted. The typical ones, obviously, you see is the general fund uh, and in any kind of utility funds. And doing that long-term forecasting, I know in the, my past life, uh, I had been partnered with the community development uh, folks, and they were looking for a, uh, a, a way to give the commission, the planning commission, an idea of what an, a financial impact of approving a certain project within a certain zoning guidelines might look like down the road. And that turned into a 20 to 40 year outlook. Uh, and you think a 20 to 40 year outlook, how, how, you know, how accurate can that be? Like I wouldn't believe anything after three years being very accurate. Well, this rolled up and just really at a, at a 50,000 foot level, it says, well, if you put a giant warehouse in this area, here's what you could probably expect to happen to your general fund down the road. How many, how does that affect your police department potentially? Giving certain assumptions, you can put in place certain assumptions to be able to push that out into those years. Instead of maybe a, maybe a, a giant warehouse, we're looking at multifamily uh, uh, luxury apartments in that same place. Well, each one of those bring very different revenue sources. Uh, and you can you can uh, run with an assumption on what each one of those revenue sources are and then apply some assumptions toward the expense. How do you serve those entities? Uh, and one thing I'll add is, um, you know, with the backdrop of COVID, um, one of the things Ben and I are, are proud of that we did, you know, in March timeframe was um, for the clients that we have that we did, that we have long-term financial plans in place for, um, what we did was, is we built a stress test as a component of the five-year financial plan. Um, because, I mean, if you recall, we were all debating, you know, what's the shape of the recovery? Is it a U? Is it a V? Is it a swoosh? Is it, you know, I, I guess we're talking about K now, which the, uh, is a whole nother thing. Um, and so what we did is we, you know, took the same financial plan and, um, and you know, said, hey, well, what, what does the five-year revenue outlook and all these funds look like under these different scenarios? And you know, given that potential loss in revenue, what game plan does the city have to, um, to combat that potential loss in revenue? And, um, and how easy or, or difficult is it to implement that, that solution? Um, and so we you know, helped those cities really think through you know, the, the potential ways that, you know, this, this year could have gone um, and, you know, even, even moving into, into the winter here and, and the next year. Um, you know, that was actually especially valuable for some of our clients on the Missouri side that have January, or uh, I should say July fiscal years, um, where they were preparing their budget, you know, while they're in lockdown and have no data. Um, and, I, and so, um, and I, I guess, you know, it's not necessarily, with, with you all, um, you know, getting your budgets done in August, you had a couple more data points um, than, than those uh, folks on the Missouri side did, but, you know, certainly a difficult backdrop to be doing budgets this year. Um, 
but you know thinking thinking probabilistically and doing you know stress testing your assumptions on well what if I'm 10% wrong what happens um, that was a useful exercise in in the budgeting process for those um, for those entities. And it was interesting because the 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 out, output of that stress test. I mean, for me being somebody that's financially oriented, I wanted to know what the assumptions were going into the stress test. But I also knew that there's not one council member that would want to read all those numbers, or much less make sense out of them, right? So the output of that from a council perspective was a graph that shows, you know, and may, many of you probably have seen this before, but a graph that shows, you know, what your low, medium, and, and high risk of, a, of, of that of movement's key revenues are, and then being able to define, well, this, if it's low, this is happening, if medium, it's, this is going to happen, and, and they understood that. It was a picture. I mean, you can tell, like, paint a picture, and they'll understand or follow you down that road. One entity we uh, kicked that off with, well, I, I've used it three times since then, as we went through this, we're still going through that uh, the, the was a lockdown recession, but most recently I was able to bring it back to them. So when we started here, the yellow line looked like this. We're actually on top of the yellow line, which meant that, you know, it's a low impact. And here's what we see as a low impact and why we see that. Uh, so it gave them some relief. They're starting their budget process now. And again, it's over in Missouri where they do the process right. <laughs> they don't start with an April forecast. They actually start with an October forecast for the, the next year. Uh, being in Kansas my entire life, I know that that uh, that's painful to do an April forecast and then not know what's going to happen in the next six, seven months before you get to the rest of the year. Uh, but that 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 stress test was interesting. Um, actually, presenting it to the governing bodies. Uh, so we talked about forecasting, utility rate studies. Uh, you've got engineers that can do them. But you've got uh, finance people to do them. I know I always I've always been. And my preference is always lean toward the finance people because usually they understand depreciation and, and uh, depreciation and, and, and uh, uh, principal payments and everything that goes into that needs to go into that rate study. Uh, and again, that's something that we do. Uh, Long-term range, long range financial plans. This is a big one for your FMA, your uh, management assessment on your uh, ratings. If you've got some type of long range financial plan, even if you don't, that's something that we can help walk you through. Uh, and that leads directly into financial policies. You know, if you're looking at a stress test and it says, well, if you're losing 20% of your revenue base, it's, it's maybe 75% of your general fund, then, then what are you going to do? What things are going to be kicked into place? Are you going to tip into fund balance? Are you going to go into uh, 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 RIFs or, or just freezing all the expending, including any kind of vacancies? Uh, those financial policies and the long range financial plans kind of go together. I know from a GFOA perspective, long term, long range financial plans is part of that budget, uh, that best budget award uh, as well. Um, from a post issuance compliance, this is often a forgot about, forgot about subject. Anything you promise the market that you'll continue to produce is post issuance compliance. That's a very broad generalization of the 14 characteristics that that inclu is included in there. Uh, a CAFR may do that may fulfill all of them. Uh, there's a lot of entities that don't do a CAFR that that submit their uh, financial reports and that really doesn't capture everything that goes into that post issuance compliance. I know when I started my career 20 years ago, nobody really cared about it. You could still issue debt with it. Now, uh, bringing a city up to compliance in order to issue a bond is, is extremely important. And it may be us that brings them up to speed. It may be them that actually fulfills or, or, or submits all that information. Uh, but post issuance compliance is something that can easily be outsourced. So you just don't have to worry about it uh, at all. They, somebody else can do it. And we've got staff, obviously, in St. Paul that does that. Capital planning. This is a fun one because you can see the, you get to see some of the stuff that's built. You can touch it, feel it. This isn't just spending, you know, money on police or fire. Uh, capital planning is a, in this case, uh, coming in and actually preparing the entire capital plan, including getting in front of council members, uh, all the way down to just putting together the funding sources for that capital plan. You may already have a five-year uh, plan, so what you want is somebody that can give give you an idea of what the debt service might look like compared to cash in each one of those five years. Uh, obviously we do that with uh, current clients as they need it. 
and they ask for it, that's something that's not that hard to do. Uh, the, it, it, we've, I mean, at some level, we've also asked, reached out to departments, especially public works departments, to be able to gather a lot of that data and put in place a system that they can uh, continue to use a CIP. Uh, economic development project analysis, this goes way back even into, uh, into Springstead days, being able to analyze a project in separate, several different uh, uh, perspectives. Uh, from, you know, a but for test all the way down to is this something we really want to do? We've got a process, a thought process, we lead uh, not just the city administrator through, but potentially even your governing body through uh, and just to think about how you would consider a project uh, that's economic development project. And it's everything, there's an actual analytical process you can go through and we can lead you through that. Uh, and then do the analysis if you need it too. A debt management, uh, being able to put together a debt book uh, that that or a debt management plan uh, that shows what your impact, your rating might look like, what your ratios, how those change uh, based on any kind of anticipated upcoming debt, especially on the revenue side. This, I mean, the revenue bond side where you've got rate covenants and thresholds to, to meet. Uh, and being able to put together a debt management plan for some of the larger projects, whether it's a lift station or entire you know, sewer water plant that can be, uh, well, sometimes overwhelmingly expensive. And then the last thing we have on our list, I'm going to ask uh, Dan to join to give his opinion here in a minute on anything we might have missed, uh, or if he's got a comment on it, but cash advisory, uh, in this case, cash advisory, I'm going to lump into that one. Uh, the RFP for, for uh, banking services, which we've got right now with a client, we can actually issue the RFP on your behalf, actually accept the proposal again on your behalf, analyze the projects or the, the proposals, and then give you a kind of a matrix of what our thought looks like and what those proposals might look like. Uh, and I know having RFP to depository a couple different times, that process is not fun at all. And it's loaded with a lot of data, a lot of thought goes into those processes. So if I knew somebody else could have handled that, I would have done that in a heartbeat. Um, and that's something our folks over in Indiana do as well. Uh, and then a, a cash advisory to the point where we put together a, 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 not just a cash needs, but maybe what your overnight investments or, or what you might, the level of investments you might need. Uh, we've got a whole team that, that can help. Uh, work through that process and again devoted and all these all these items here and to say we you know jack presented the 400 and some people that we've got in our public sector that's what they focus on is just uh governmental the governmental sector whether it's school districts county city utility uh that's what they focus on i know dan does the same thing with his group uh and, and right now we're working with uh we've been working for a while now with dan's group and, and bringing them over to fill some of these functions right here that you've got in front of you dan did i miss anything that's sitting there do you have an opinion on any of it no i, I really like this this list uh hello everyone thank you for allowing me to um join your meeting i appreciate it uh if it's okay how, how much time do we have left it do I have time for about two or three minutes worth of comments? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. yeah. We've actually got until 1115. Yeah. We've only got a couple more slides, so. Okay. Well, the, the I like having this slide up because it allows me to talk about outsourcing as, as a big picture item. And, and, and outsourcing and, and getting help ranges, typically my experience, and I've been around as, as long as Ben, you know, I'm 25 plus years in the industry, uh, ranges from uh, emergency to, to strategic. And as you might imagine, you know, the, the, the delivery uh, really has to be tailored based on, you know, how the work comes in. So we like to be strategic. Everyone likes to be strategic. But the reality is, is that most of the time when, or a good percentage of the time, I should say, when we get an opportunity to support a client is because something's happened. Somebody's left, somebody's, um, uh, an additional requirement that wasn't expected, uh, just some circumstances where uh, there's an immediate need and there's no real other choices. So we, we get on the line and help out. And in those cases, we can be responsive. And 
Uh, typically, it's it's disruptive to you, it's disruptive to to everyone involved, but but we can help, and really in any of these areas. Mm-hmm. And my role isn't I, I'm not an expert in every one of these areas, but my role is to uh, play the match game, uh, talk to you, listen to your needs uh, with a list like this in mind, and then bring in people that I know that can support you and to help you accomplish your uh, initiatives. On the strategic side of, of this, this is really where the benefit is. And this, the strategic side is anytime your available time <clears throat> plus the initiative you're trying to accomplish, exceed, or excuse me, your accounted for time plus the initiative you're trying to accomplish exceeds your available time, that's an opportunity for outsourcing. And we appreciate any opportunities to talk to you about that across the entire spectrum of the, the roles that you play in your, in your organization. So for, from our standpoint, uh, as I said on this, this is, believe it or not, even a partial list of the things that we know cross your desk on a regular basis and decisions that you have to make in real time. And every once in a while, uh, th- there's a need for help. And what we want you to understand is that uh, we can certainly uh, talk to you about that and put you in connection with people that can uh, can help you on a strategic basis. And also uh, if there is an emergency that pops up. So I'll turn it back over to Ben and I may have more comments later on a different slide. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dan. The, you know, the only thing I'd ask, add to this to this uh, slide right here, and we can move on is, is in, again, in my prior life, realizing that Arguing for an additional body within a finance department is like pushing a rope up a hill. It's just not going to happen. I've had police chiefs that have stood in front of a council arguing for the need of an additional accounting tech and how it would affect the police department. The mayor turns to me and says, nice try, Hart. Not going to (laughs) work. Because everybody loves the police department, right? So I'm thinking that maybe they can get my accounting tech. It didn't work. so in that case, that's when we really had to start looking at something like this. I, I, I've got to be able to have my employees do more. Uh, and, and in this case, in this case, I was looking at this list and, and how much of this can we get done and in, in, in not have to hire an additional body. I was able to get consulting services budget, but just not a body. Uh, so with that, uh, we can we can move on to the next one. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, we'll just go through. Um, you know, we, we kind of alluded to a lot of these as we were kind of talking yeah. um, to date. And so, and we've got, we want to leave some time for questions. And so just, um, we'll kind of run through these real, real quick here. And, you know, just to, um, as kind of a global comment, you know, these, we've got three pretty short case studies here. And, yeah. um, you know, these are, these are cities of, you know, all different, all different sizes, you know, just to show that, you know, each, you know, each organization is unique and, you know, each, you know, all the challenges are, are unique. Um, and, you know, so the, the first one is, you know, it's a small exurban community, about 4,500 uh, people, you know, full, uh, full service city, public safety, electric utility, water utility. Um, and, you know, the, the long term tenured finance director um, retired and the, the city and, and the governing body chose not to replace um, that individual. Um, and so they, yeah, so they, they brought and, us in since we were already there in May <laughs> and said it, it brought Jack and I in and said, how, how can you guys help us? We don't replace this finance director uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and, 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 yeah. and I'll say one of the things that, you know, was a, was a pain point with the governing body was, you know, they, they uh, were, were longing for some information that they that they weren't getting and you know wanted to see things displayed a little bit differently um you know i know that you know the the kansas budget form is not you know very illuminating for you know how you know you know what your actual what your objectives are as a as a city um and so as part of that you know we you know reworked the the whole process reworked all the documents um you know worked with the governing body for exactly what they wanted them to look like. Um, we actually created a bespoke, uh, they, they like alliteration there. So we, we created a bespoke uh, city council color coded controllability index of all the levers that they could pull to, you know, to make the decisions that they want, you know, how, 
how easy or difficult it was to implement those those decisions. Um, so you know it was a it was a it was a, a great solution. Um, it, it's, we've been doing that for a little while now, um, and it's it's been a it's been a good uh, solution for them. Um, moving to a little bit larger uh, size city, we've got about 50, 55,000, another full service city. Um, you had turnover of, you know, the three top positions within that organization in a relatively short period of time, um, combated, you know, compounded by difficult recruitment processes, um, you know, not city regional centers, not necessarily close to, you know, uh, you know, the large, you know, you know, Kansas City, St. Louis's, Wichita's of the world. And so, you know, it's difficult to recruit, you know, that the talent, you know, to, to um, uh, you know, to, to your area. Um, and so, um, Ben, what was our kind of our solution there? Yeah, so debt management in this case, we've, we're obviously their MA are to begin with. So having access to all their debt uh, is important, being able to uh, map that out with their budget process. Uh, cash flow monitoring was the same way, just understanding what that cash flow looks like and, and what their investment side might look like uh, to maximize their interest. And that's that's kind of a laughable item now is we're maximizing interest. Heck, pretty soon we'll be paying somebody to take our money. Uh, <laughs> uh, trustee function support, uh, uh, same thing. The audit preparation, getting their audit ready to go. Uh, that's what we had, had talked about before. And then it, providing any kind of budget assistance that they may need at, at whatever depth they, they, they need it. It may just be somebody else running with the budget process and then us filling in the blanks on how things ought to go. Uh, it, in this case, it may even lead into us making a presentation to the council uh, so they understand what those different buckets, the general fund and what those different fund buckets look like and why they exist instead of lumping all the cash together and saying, well, we got enough cash, we can go do this, this. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, and, and our last one here is, you know, it, even larger city, we got about 95,000. Um, and, you know, the challenge there is, you know, it's just an accountant turned over at just the wrong time. You know, it was your, it was your busy season. Um, you're trying to, trying to get all the information that was required over to the auditors. And, you know, they just knew that they weren't going to have enough time um, to, you know, to go through the, you know, public sector recruitment process and train a new accountant you know, get them up to speed and, and the required amount of time. Yeah, and, and in this case, we had, uh, I believe Dan's group come in and, and actually do the capital asset accounting piece uh, uh, forum for their CAF or so they can move forward with their audit. Uh, we ended up putting a, together a CIP reconciliation. This is a couple of years ago, uh, just to be able to uh, be able to have an arbitrage calculation done. And there's a lot of projects if you don't use it in your system, or you don't have a good, a good uh, handle on what some of those CIP, what those CIP buckets look like that's been bond funded, it, it can make it really messy, especially when you're trying to allocate your interest amongst each one of those CIPs. I ended up uh, coming in and doing that. Now, I also mentioned the RFP, the depository. This is the entity that we did that with. And we're still doing it with, they're going through the RFP process right now. Great, um, and you know, Dan, uh, mentioned, you know, a little bit of, you know, some of the best practices, but, you know, we wanted to, you know, bring the, uh, as kind of the, the wrap up slide, you know, make this be more global than, you know, just the finance department, you know, then, you know, what, what are some best practices and some, th some qualities to think about, you know, if you're, if you're considering doing some sort of shared service model, um, you know, moving forward, um, you know, obviously the, the cost has to make sense, you know, you, the you know the contract has to be less than you know what you know the person and their their ability is um, you know it's got to improve the quality somehow you know the logistics have to make sense you know there has to be you know a, a good process that that makes sense for all, all parties um, there has to be some level of, of innovation be it technological or economies of state a scale or you know any of that that you know isn't readily available to you um, then you were also, you know, creating opportunities to, to collaborate. Um, I don't know, Dan, if you have any um, other words of wisdom that you want to add before we... I think I've got a, I've got a question for Dan. Or, I've got sure. a question for Dan himself. You know, COVID has, if it's done one thing, it's, it's, it's made 
Zoom a, a, a verb. <laughs> Uh, in, in electronic means of communication is now prevalent. And I know in the future, I, I can't imagine any of this going to go away and go back to the same way we've been doing business. But I'm going to ask kind of zeroing in on logistics uh, a little bit. Maybe this is unfair. It, it, in, in our world, we serve 22 different states, seven countries, etc. In your world, Daniel, I know you guys work all over but do you see challenges and how some of those solutions to those challenges are in logistics and in, in using electronic means to access a client or being able to fulfill some of those items? Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Uh, electronic uh, presence through Zoom or Skype or, or other things are tools that, that we've used for several years uh, because we found out that for routine tasks, clients really don't want to pay for travel and uh, staff would, would prefer to work remotely where possible. So we, we like to do our work on site. Um, we like to do the initial work on site till we really get uh, a, our feet underneath us, but that's not always possible. So Zoom, um, one, of the, one of the things from this pandemic is everyone is comfortable with Zoom. Uh, a year ago, Ben, I don't know how much you probably use Zoom. Now you use it every day. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> right. So, and, and I'll bet you that of the other uh, 28 or so people, 27 or so people on this call, uh, maybe a lot of similar, uh, similar circumstances, but we've proven that we can get work done uh, using uh, remote technology. And in addition to Zoom, which allows you to have those face-to-face -face meetings, among other things, there's other tools that are available through shared uh, repositories. A tool we use is Huddle and uh, different tools that we use that allow more real-time access into data. So the logistics, uh, which is number three on this, uh, when we say logistics have to make sense, uh, the logistics also need to be flexible um, so that we can adapt as, as the situation uh, dictates. But what we have learned is that we can do virtually everything on that list from a, a few slides ago uh, remotely over time. And if there's initial work that needs to be done or field work that needs to be done initially, um, that's something that, that, that can be done as well. Of course, in this particular environment and for the next several months, you know, that's, that's a, a more difficult, um, it's not easy to make that a blanket statement, but, yeah. but the point is, is that, Th this service is designed to be flexible. It's designed to gather the most information with the least amount of, of cost and time possible so that it can be go right into uh, processing to get you to some preliminary information so that you can make decisions and then move on to the next challenge. Yeah, thanks. That's, that, that, that's what I thought. Uh, Jack, we do have some questions that have popped up. Um, where do you yeah, Most did, governments uh, give the, get the biggest bang for the buck. Um, I'll let you take that one, Ben or Dan. The, yeah, so on, in, especially in Kansas, um, in this case, from my prior experience, I, I, would have to, I would have to say preparation for an audit uh, is scalable. It's something, that, it's something that you can come in and have somebody do and be able to reply to that audit, including writing the report and getting it out the door. In some cases, you're RFPing a, 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 an audit and including in that audit a, a separate cost for writing the actual CAFR. You might be able to weigh that against having somebody in and actually doing the CAFR itself uh, over a long period of time. That You may have some cost savings in that case. Um, and I guess it also in terms of frequency, it it seems like we're, we're doing a lot of bank as well. Um, you know, the, a lot of, a lot of, you know, bottlenecks and, and capacity are being opened by, um, within your departments by, you know, offloading, you know, once one small, but time consuming task, um, you know, to free up your capacity for, you know, maybe some higher level functions. Um, I, I'm actually going to jump down to the, the last one. Um, yeah. You know, the for the how has COVID managed the the changed or how has changed the managed service model um, and shared service model? You know, I one thing that people say um, that I, I tend to believe is you know, COVID all it has done is it, it hasn't changed anything. It's accelerated all the changes and trends that are that have already been taking place. Um, and you know, Dan already uh, mentioned that with Zoom. You know, 
we always had the capability to work remotely. It's just that, you know, it, the adoption rate that would have taken 10 years happened in, in you know, 10 months or less than. Um, one day. And, one day. I mean, yeah, our, our, our firm went completely remote overnight. You know, they sent 4,000 people home and, you know, and we've, you know, every, everything has been pretty much, pretty much fine. Um, but, you know, I, I think in Kansas, you know, there's so many small communities. Um, and, you know, I think that potentially COVID will be changing, you know, some, some shared service models. Um, I think, you know, this is, you know, a wild prediction time. You know, I, I think um, that some communities might start considering um, you know, partnering with other communities to, you know, to deliver services to get that economies of scale. Um, because you as a small entity, you know, one of your competitive disadvantages is the smaller economies of scale, you know, not every city needs one FTE accountant to do all the functions. Um, but can you partner to you, you know, the, those type those types of, of relationships and um, we're starting to see that around the country. Um, the priority based budgeting folks are the ones that are, you know, really kind of pioneering some of those shared service models. Um, but that, so that's my, that's my soapbox for, for the day on, on some of those issues. Um, other, other kind of Dan or Ben, any biggest bang for the buck on, um, on, on the outsourcing, any, any functions? I'll let Dan answer that question. It's, 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 a, have my two cents. <laughs> it's an interesting question. Um, biggest bang for the buck. So I'm going to answer it this way. You know, there's the another reason for outsourcing is to manage risk and enhance value. So under the category of risk, you know, the, the bang for your buck is, is avoidance of, of the pain. And so I do see as I'm inventorying, you know, the, the projects that we're working on, uh, probably about 60% of it is in managing risk or, or avoiding pain. So it's in the category of, of uh, reconciliations, maintaining subsidiary ledgers, um, understanding new accounting and reporting uh, pol or pronouncements and applying them in, in your community, uh, getting ready for the audit, uh, making sure that there's separation of duties and that the internal controls uh, support your your financial reporting. So I think when you're talking about bang for your buck, those are the things that can be bundled probably the most creatively so that you can, uh, in one service, you can get multiple benefits. So for example, if, if we uh, have a service to help you implement GASB 87, well, that's going to touch your internal controls. It's going to touch your policies. It might even uh, create some management benefits or it should create some management benefits uh, from the deeper insight into your leases. So th the, the bang for your buck, I think, is just trying to bundle as many things together into something that makes sense. So sometimes, you know, it's harder to ride a bicycle slow than it is to ride it fast. Outsourcing is a little bit the same way. If we try to keep the scope so narrow that it's only, you know, reconcile us for one month and then, you know, go away, we can do that. It's probably not going to be the most cost effective and you're not going to get as much benefit as you can if you say, okay, we're really having a problem maintaining all of this. What, what are your thoughts on how we can, how we can improve it? And then all of that sets the table for you to spend more time on enhancing your value and working on those strategic initiatives of whether it be the capital planning or the cash flow or investment management, uh, TIF monitoring, all those things that that enhance the 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 citizens or your constituents' experience working with the city. So, kind of a long-winded answer, but I, I think the the biggest bang for the buck is to try to find the combination of services that's right for your community, and that starts with really just a conversation. Uh, one other thing that's not on that list that just occurred to me. And it should have occurred earlier. Cares accounting, <laughs> accounting yep. and, and and compliance with cares money. I know I got a call this morning from a client that says, "Hey, help us, help yep. us put this together for the county." Uh, you know, just a former, just as a former auditor, I'm thinking, what kind of compliance nightmare are you going to run into when, when this thing comes down the, the road and you've got a single audit on all this federal money? 
uh, are there compliance areas already established for each one of these grants? Where are they coming from? There, there's, I mean, that's something I would I would be drawn experts in to help out with ahead of the auditors and and not temp, not really relying on an auditor. Just make sure your system is set up ahead of time uh, to where you're complying with those factors. But yeah, that's my soapbox too. So I'm, any questions you guys might have or uh, please reach out to us. Any yeah, other Dan, questions? Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, Dan, Dan mentioned it. You know, we, um, our, you know, our role is, you know, we're gonna, you know, listen and be connectors and all of that. You know, I, I would like to say, and I think this might qualify as a mixed metaphor, you know, that, you know, <laughs> being in Baker Tilly's like being like the captain on your, you know, gym class team where you get to pick teams and you just got all first round draft picks um, to, to choose from. Um, we, we've got a lot of great team members that we like to, that we like to work with and um, and you know we we'd love to have the conversation with you and see where we can best you know add value um, in your organization. Um, any happy to answer any last questions or we, we might get to even return you know the last 15 oh only five minutes of five the minutes, uh, yeah. of your day so <laughs> the day I don't see anything in chat, but if you have a question or want to follow up, go ahead and come on now. Otherwise, I'm going to turn it over to Ryan to wrap us up. Ben and Jack and Dan, thank you for your time. Again, thank you, Baker Tilly, for sponsoring the conference and being willing to present. I found it very useful. I uh, That list was extensive, uh, kind of a reminder of all the things uh, I need, the plates I need to be spinning. And uh, thank you for your time. Uh, if you'll uh, go out to the conference website, check out the company profile and reach out to the uh, Baker Tilly if you have any questions. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you for all being for joining here. us. You bet. Thanks. And we will see you for session 